Yeah, thanks very much. And uh, Derek, welcome back. Fight number three. Obviously, you're a guy with a uh, ton of experience outside the uh, UFC, and you come in short notice last year. Uh, wasn't your night, but you bounced back against TJ Laramie in September. I'm just curious, after all the work you put in on the regional scene, training, getting to that point, did you really feel like a UFC fighter prior to getting that first win? Man, uh, I think I've always known I've belonged here and uh, been in the UFC. Obviously, I didn't, uh, I, I claimed, uh, everybody claims they're a UFC fighter, but getting that first win solidifies that you're a UFC fighter. I mean, that's that's the, the big mark. Um, yeah, man, uh, I belonged here and now we're here and when it fights, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I am a UFC fighter with the win now, you know? And now you get a chance to make it two in a row against Charles Rosa. Just uh, give us your thoughts on the matchup here. I love the matchup, man. Uh, you know, uh, I guess it should showcase my skills. Uh, and I think that where he's strong at uh, is is where I'm where I'm strong at on the opposite side. So I think it's going to be a good match for me. And Saturday night, I get to showcase uh, the involvement of my uh, my skills set uh, down with James Krause and Gloria MMA. And, you know, Charles uh, predicted a knockout in this one. And guys are always confident going into fights, right? But uh, he says you're going to find out there's levels to this sport. Do you feel he's taking you lightly at all, given all that experience that you did have? Look at my fights before I got here. I fought tougher competition before I got here than he did. He's had, like, three tough fights in the UFC. Um, yeah, I mean, I fought UFC caliber fights all from 2013 to now. Um and that's just, I mean, he can say what he wants, but he knows the truth and he knows, uh, knows, you know, he's predicted a first round knockout. He predicted a second, third round submission. He predicted that he doesn't know where it's going to go. So I don't think he's too confident in actually his, his skill set. So uh, we will see what happens on Saturday night. But the fact is that I fought tougher competition to get here. I went through the grinder to get here and he didn't. He fought a bunch of bums for his first eight fights. And then he fought Dennis Seaver for his UFC debut. There's a, th when we talk about levels of this game, I went through the levels, he did not. And you know, when we talk about predictions, is there any prediction from your side for how this one ends? I walk in there and I walk out there with two checks and I get my hand raised. That's all I'm gonna give. Um, that's all there needs to be. Fair enough, last one for me. Between the uh, Dawson and Laramie fights, obviously you had that Griffin fight fall through. I'm just curious, did you change anything with the uh, weight cut approach between then and the Laramie bout and, and obviously this fight, or was that just kind of a one-off incident? Man, I got sick with the Griffin fight, but uh, I recently started working with, uh, working with Tyler Minton. Uh, and yeah, man, uh, it's going great. Um, this is gonna, this is the best weight cut I'm gonna ever have, uh, continuingly now. I don't have to stress about it and they got my weight under control and yeah, man, it's, it's going great. Good to hear and, uh, best of luck this weekend. Thank you, man. We'll go next to Damon Martin with MMAfighting.com. Your line is open. Hey, Derek, uh, you know, all the talk that's leading into this fight, I mean, you're a veteran, you've been around, but does that does that raise the intensity a little bit when there's a little bit back and forth like it seems like there is with, with Charles Rosa? Nah, man, that, it's all fun and games until we get in there. You know, you can say what you want, what you will, and, but you got to still fight me on uh, Saturday night, and that's, that's all there is to it. You know, I'm not a big talker. I just know – um, when somebody does, they have one prediction, they go to six or seven others, and then they talk about how great they are. They're really lacking uh, what it is upstairs. And, you know, Saturday night will show, you know, he, he's proven to be able to take an ass whooping and, you know, let's, let's go. Uh, obviously, you work with James Krause and the team down at Glory. Uh, I think James Krause is one of those kind of unheralded great coaches in our sport that doesn't he doesn't put himself out there that way. But, you know, we've seen it, especially this last weekend with the Julian Marquez fight where he said basically the exact right things you need to say to get his guy ready for that third round to go out and get that finish. Uh, can you kind of talk about what kind of influence that, you know, James has been in your career and, and, and what kind of coach he's been for you? James Krause is the best coach in the world. I've been to a lot of camps and, uh, and he's going to, he doesn't need to talk, man. His performances and the, the coaching that he does says for themselves. You know what I mean? He doesn't need to go out there and tell everybody how great he is because his guys are performing for him and he performs for himself. Like everybody knows how, how good James Cross is. And the impact that he's had on my career is, um, you know, it showed a little bit with the TJ Laramie fight, but come Saturday night, it really is going to show 
the the involvement that I've I've uh, made down at Glory MMA with James Krause. We we obviously hear a lot about the big teams in MMA. Of course, Charles Rosa comes from one of those American Top Team, and those are tremendous gyms, of course. But Glory is one of those gyms that is qu quietly putting together a pretty big roster of talented fighters. Uh, do you feel like you know your your team maybe doesn't get the credit it deserves in terms of uh, when we talk about the big gyms in MMA? Yeah, man, I think it's like the big gyms. They're a bunch of little teams anyway. You know what I mean? It's like a bunch of it's a bunch of little cousins, like in in different little families. You know, like we're a big family down there, and you know it speaks to ourselves the talent that we're getting there. And uh, you know, right now I think he has fourteen or fifteen guys in the UFC on the roster. Um, eventually, everybody will recognize it, and uh, yeah, that's all there needs to be said. We go out there and we fight, and that's that's what shows for ourselves. And, and it does seem like you guys, you know, kind of have the good balance in terms of training partners, but also coaching. I mean, it seems like there's a good balance there because you do see that sometimes where guys have a great coach, maybe they don't have the right training partners or maybe they have the right training partners. They don't have the right coach. It seems like you guys have built a really good chemistry there. Yeah, man, uh, it's, it's, it's the best, best camp I've ever been to as far as like the – the knowledge in that room is crazy. The coaches uh, all work together. They're not trying to balance out that we know who runs show. James Cross runs the show. He puts us on a schedule and we keep it. And uh, and the improvements and and the the fights speak for themselves on on you know how much how much wins we're getting. You know, let alone the performances that are happening there and like all the underdogs. Like keep counting us out and we'll keep knocking them down. That's all I gotta say. Because I mean, look how many underdogs won last year and. You know, Julian was last last week, too. So, you know, keep counting them out. Keep counting those Midwest boys out and see what happens. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. Appreciate it. Thank you, brother. We'll take our last questions from Cote Cruz with Ford One MMA. Your line is open. Hi, Derek. How you doing? Good to talk to you. I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, man. Thank you for your time. Uh, how's Vegas reading you this fight week, man? Oh, it's great, man. Uh, I mean... <laughs> You're stuck in a room, a couple of rooms, you know, they kind of, you know, went down to more, more lockdown situations and, and that's, that's all right. I mean, we're just kind of chilling out with the team, getting ready, you know, hanging out with, you know, the, the squad that you bring out here. So it is what it is. You cut weight, you get in, you go get the win and yeah, it's great. The weather's a lot nicer. I mean, I left home at negative 18, so I like it. Yeah. It's good to have some sunny days around you, right? <laughs> yep. Well, um, after a bit of a sour debut against Grant Dawson, how does it feel to finally have your first UFC win? Great, man. It was just a, uh, it was just a sign of relief, man. Like that's that's all the the TJ Laramie fight is. It uh, solidified everything I worked for for like the last eleven years was not for nothing, man. I, my goal has always been to get the UFC and win fights for my very first amateur fight in 2010. So uh, yeah, man. Last ten years was it for nothing, and now I get to showcase, uh, you know, the improvements and how everything else so well you have a great submission game that's no secret most of your finishes coming by way of a tap out how do you feel you stack up against charles rosa in that regard i mean if it's, it's a great fight for me man uh you know he he's uh he's good off his back a little bit you know he's got good grounds but we saw what happens with somebody that's just as you know that's better than him but more aggressive what happens you know we saw that with bryce mitchell and you know not it is what it is i'm gonna go out there and show show a better case of that so well uh yesterday i had a conversation with james kraus where he said that he felt that you had the upper hand against your opponent this saturday he also said that you've made a ton of improvements on your game. Could you comment on what it's like to have James lead the team and how training at Glory MMA has added to your toolbox? Yeah, man, it just, it's, it's great to have uh, the training partners and the coaches that we have down there. You know, it's, it's, I've always had a skill set and I've always, uh, I've always been good everywhere, but James Krause is so good at putting it together. And even whether it's mental, physical or technical man the dude is a genius and you know like i said like the team is keep building and it's, it's building a roster and the up-and-comers that people don't understand uh or even know yet are are going to showcase their skills here come the next couple of years so um that team is real and uh it just the performances speak for themselves well uh charles rosa just like you has a strong bjj game that sometimes leads uh, to stand-up battles. 
do you feel prepared if you cancel each other out on the ground and the fight turns into a brawl? Yeah, man. I mean, I've been at this stuff a long time. And if he wants to, if he wants to sit there and trade, he's going to end up on his back. And, you know, like I have power in my hands and I've, I've, the thing is like, I have a lot of submissions on my game, but if you go watch my fights, I, I usually beat people up until, until I get the submission. So uh, yeah, if he want, if we keep it there, if he's able, you know, maybe we stay there. Maybe that's my game plan. No one knows until we get on there Saturday. So I might just want to stand there and trade with him and show everybody like how good my stand up is too. So yeah, keep an eye out for that, too. Well, uh, it's a big couple of months for you and your team. Kevin Kroon, Grant Dawson, and Megan Anderson, just to name a few, have important fights soon. Uh, how important for your own preparation has been sharing the training room with them ahead of their fights? Yeah, man, like I said, it's like a big family that just works hard, puts their nose down, and listens to our coach. And, uh, yeah, and here it come. Julian Marquez set the tone last week, you know, never gave up, uh, ended up getting that submission in the third round, and that just set the tone for the next. I think we have six or seven guys in a row and then a couple weeks off. So that set our first quarter tone off, and I'm just going to continue that on Saturday night. Well, sir, best of luck for you on Saturday. Thank you for your Thank time. You. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, uh, Derek. You're all set. Thank you.